we already know that if we take a steady, fully developed flow at a round pipe and use continuity and the x-momentum Navier-Stokes equation in polar uh, cylindrical coordinates, we can work our way down to this equation for the velocity profile. So it's parabolic in the pipe. You've got this capital R, the inside uh, radius of the pipe, minus small r, the location in the pipe squared. So you wind up with a velocity profile that has that characteristic. Peaks in the middle and tapers off to zero at the sides, just as we'd expect. Now if we examine this laminar flow in a pipe and we look at our velocity cross-section, our profile is parabolic like this and it's at a maximum u max right in the center of the flow. So we got this expression before for the velocity as a function of position the radius r in the pipe and it will have a maximum at r equals zero on the center line right here. So that's u max. And if we use that information we can find out what that actual maximum value will be. r squared will be zero, small r squared. So we'll have r squared over 4 mu di p di z and it's negative because di p di z is negative. The pressure's dropping as we go. Whoops, that should be a di x. Pressure's dropping as we go in the x direction. So we've got this u max. So our velocity profile also obeys this same relationship u max times 1 minus r squared over capital R squared, giving this parabolic profile shape. We'd like to find out what the average velocity is, the capital V that we use in Bernoulli's equation and use a lot. That capital V is the average of the u velocity. And that average has to take into account the fact that although this region in here has a very high velocity, it has a really small area compared to this region out here which has a lower velocity but occupies a larger area of the pipe. So we have to do our integration a little bit carefully. So we'll try to find the flow divided by the cross-sectional area of the pipe. Cross-sectional area of the pipe is pi d squared over 4, so that's the 1 over a out in front. We're going to integrate from the center of the pipe out to the outside edge, so from 0 out to capital R, the velocity times the incremental area. So velocity times area, that's a volume flow rate, and we're going to integrate that over the entire pipe. So u max, 1 minus r squared over capital R squared, that's the velocity, 2 pi r, 2 pi r around that annular area times dr that distance in there gives us the dA. Simplifying that a little bit and taking some of the constants outside integral from 0 to d by 2 is just the same as the, the radius r minus 4r cubed over d squared times dr. If we perform that integration, being careful not to make the mistakes I made as I went through it the first time, we'll eventually work our way down and find that the average velocity is just the maximum velocity divided by 2. So although that doesn't look like it's the average, it winds up being the average over the entire cross-section. So the average velocity is one-half the maximum velocity. That's because so much larger a region out here is traveling at that relatively low velocity here compared to the high velocity in the center. So the average velocity is one-half the maximum velocity and we can use that when we're, uh, when we're trying to work out what's going on in the pipe.